know, when we find ourselves sad, when we find ourselves discouraged, we can put our hope in God. We can choose, regardless of our circumstances, to praise Him. For He's worthy, even if we've had the stinkest day possible. And I mean like truly tragic days. We can still praise, we can still honor, we can still glorify Him. Amen. Hey, um, this morning, church, we're blessed to have Pastor Jermaine bringing a word for us. So I will get out of the way. Jermaine, over to you, mate. Testing one, two. Yeah. How is everyone today? Yeah, good. Isn't it good to be in the house today? Yeah. Well, a huge welcome. Um, and uh, it's my absolute privilege to be able to uh, bring a word today on Father's Day. And um, my name is Jermaine, like Tim said. I'm 37 years old, have five children, and uh, married to uh, the beautiful Nardine here, the one who probably, the ringleader, of stitched up the green uh, T-shirts for all the guys, I can guarantee you. Um, we uh, celebrated our uh, daughter's uh, 17th birthday last night, and uh, she actually turns 17 tomorrow. Um, but yeah, she's grown up very, very fast. But um, yeah, yeah, another year and she'll be 18 crazy times. Uh, for those, uh, yeah, um, last week we uh, prayed out uh, Pastor Pete and Deb, and uh, you'll be happy to know that they're doing really well. I've got a couple of photos uh, that's going to come up. So here's the first one. And uh, so they're in Spain with their daughter, Lavana. Uh, there's a couple of others too. I'll go to the next one. Here's the other one. There's son Kirk. There's a few more there. He's getting them. There's Nona with uh, granddaughter Jada on the balcony there. And that's them. Yeah, that's them there. I don't know where that is. It looks cool though. Yeah, Spain. And a couple more, I think. Awesome. So they got their uh, yeah, safe and sound, and uh, I love this one here, catching up with Popper. Awesome. So yeah, they're doing really, really well, and uh, you'll be happy to know that. Um, but this morning, what I'm going to do is we're going to dive straight into it, and so I'll pray, and uh, I'll bring the word this morning. Father, thank you so much uh, that you are the greatest father that we could ever have. And uh, Lord, you're the one that created all things. And Lord, you looked at us in, in the beginning and said that it's good. And uh, Lord, we thank you for your love that you have lavished on us, your word says. And uh, Lord, for all that you have for us. And today we want to honor you as um, the greatest father of all time. And so Lord, as, we, uh, as your children are listening, Lord, I pray that our hearts would be inclined to heaven today. Lord, that we would hear from you in a powerful way in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Cool. So today I want to talk about the love of the Father, the love of the Father. There are many different ways that we could know God. We can know him as a all-powerful creator of all the universe, the one who created the universe, or we can know him as the one who sits on the throne surrounded by angels. We can know him as the omnipotent being who part the seas and and raise the dead to life. Different people have different ideas of who God is. Some people see him as this distant cosmic being who couldn't possibly be concerned with our lives. Some of us see him as a, a, a holy, unapproachable figure who should be feared. Others think that he's just waiting for us to make a mistake. Or they think that God is someone with a long list of, of, of all the things that we do wrong. But with Jesus came a new way to know God. Through him, we didn't just receive a savior, but we were given a father. See, when the disciples asked Jesus, how should we pray? The very first words out of Jesus' mouth were, our father in heaven. And of all the ways that he could have told us to relate to God, Jesus said that he is our father first. And that's the best understanding that we could have of God one of a loving father, one who is proud of us, one who cares for us, one who cheers us on when we, when we fall and when we fail. And you see, when we have this understanding, 
we start to realize that God is not distant, nor is he mad at us, but he's madly in love with us. Jesus, the Son of God, could have referred to him only as his Father. But when he spoke to those around him, Jesus would say that he's, he's your Father. And it was so important to Jesus that we see God this way. And each time that Jesus said this, he was reminding us of how God feels about us. That he's not just the creator of the universe, but he's our heavenly Father. He's your biggest fan, church. He's the one who loves to spend time with you. He gets excited when he gets to talk with you. He always has your best interest at heart. You see, our Heavenly Father will even fight for us. He's the one who gives us our strength and protection. He's there to encourage us when we are down. He's there to push us forward when we feel like giving up. You know, the Bible says this, that if he cares for the birds of the air, how much more will he care for us? Isn't that a good thing this morning? Amen? Amen. Maybe you grew up without a father, or he was harsh in dealing with his own struggles. Maybe you have gotten used to him not being there, or never been able to measure up. But we can't let who our earthly father wasn't to distort the truth of who our, how our heavenly father is. Let me say that again. We can't let our, who our earthly father wasn't to distort the truth of who our heavenly father is. Amen? Your earthly father may have been difficult to please, but know that God is always pleased with you. He may have been quick to find fault in you, but know that God is filled with mercy for you. He may have been absent, but remember that God said that he would always be with you. You know, sometimes we never see God as being proud of us, do we? Sometimes. Sometimes we're too busy criticizing ourselves. We think that we're not smart enough, or we think that we're, we don't look the right way, or we don't have enough talent. Sometimes if we decide that we don't like ourselves, then how could God love us or like us? We know that he loves us, but could he actually like us? Maybe you think that you're not as funny as your friends or as gifted as your siblings. Or maybe you, you think you don't have a great career like your neighbor. I want to encourage you today, don't think like that. Somebody say, don't think like that. Because your heavenly Father is the one who breathed life into you. You know, the Bible says that he molded us and shaped us and he breathed life into you, into us. What an image. You have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Turn to the person next to you and say, you've been fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on, say it like you mean it. <laughs> He's the one that gave you your smile. He's the one that gave you your personality, your gifts, your un un uniqueness. Every part of you has been carefully designed into what he calls a masterpiece. When God looks at you, he sees a masterpiece. I know sometimes that's hard to understand or even feel, but I can guarantee you right now that he's proud of you. And that's the love of our Heavenly Father. When he looks at you, he smiles. He likes your height. He likes your ability. He likes your ideas. He's the one that gave them to you. And please remember this. Write this down. Don't let what others have said about you or your own negative opinions tear down God's masterpiece. No father wants to see their child living defeated, discouraged about who they are right if you were supposed to be any different i could guarantee you that our heavenly father would have made it that way our heavenly father doesn't make mistakes he doesn't leave out anything for you are valued let go of comparison and know that god is proud of you you see god not only loves us but he actually likes us too would you believe it and we have permission to like who we are as well. You know, I can picture God right now sitting on a throne with his eyes fixed on each and every one of us. That's how much he loves us. The Bible says that he sees our every step. Our Father celebrates our every win in our lives. 
You are so important to him that he doesn't want to miss a moment. He looked forward to the day you were born. He looked forward to the day you took your first step. He was so excited about the plans that he has for your future. Psalms 101 says this, As parents feel for their children, God feels for for those who fear him. What's your image of God? Do you see him as a heavenly father? Do you see him as proud of you? You see, he's not a father that replays the mistakes. He doesn't hold on to those because his heart is filled with so much love. You know, the Bible says that he is love. When we have the right image of God, it gives us boldness. It gives us confidence. It allows us to pursue our dreams. It allows us to overcome any challenges. If the creator of the universe is for us, then who can be against us, amen? See, sometimes, sometimes we want an elder or a, or a pastor to pray with us or, or to pray for us because sometimes we think that they're closer to God than anyone else, sometimes. But I want to remind you today that we don't need a third party to go to our Heavenly Father. You're as much of a, of a child of God as anyone else. You know, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12 says this, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and, the ears, and his ears are attentive to their prayers. You don't need a pastor, a priest, or a saint to connect your call to God. Because when it's you on the line, church, he answers. He picks up straight away. He doesn't put you on hold. You don't go to voicemail. As a sons and daughters, you have priority access to your heavenly Father. So some people don't want to bother God because they see prayer as a last resort. They think God has bigger plans to deal with than what they have. We can all feel that, right? Well, understand this, church, that you are God's biggest deal. You are His prized possession. There is no detail in your life too small to concern him. He numbered the hair on your head. Isn't that crazy when you think about that, that he knows the number of hair on your head. It's very quiet in here. He ordered your days. Whether you like it or not, the Bible says that he he watches you when you sleep. He cares about every detail of your life. He cares if your car needs repairing. He cares if you didn't have a good night's sleep. If it's important to you, it's important to God. When you, when you call, He answers. And you don't have to pray like the, the King James Version Bible or, or, or like Shakespeare authored it. You can if you want to, but Jesus said that it's your father that you're dealing with. And you know, when I talk to my dad, I don't say, Greetings, thy senior father of the Allen family. I request an audience with thee. No, no, no. My father would actually think that was really, really crazy. He would probably say, I can hear him now. What's the matter with you? (laughs) Talk properly. (laughs) You know, when I talk to my dad, I just talk to him. In the same way, prayer is talking with our father in heaven. He wants to hear the details. He wants to be involved in your life. You can ask questions. You can ask him, you can tell him what you're thankful for. You can tell him where you need help. You know, when you go to your father, he'll give you wisdom. He'll give you good ideas. He'll give you direction. You don't have to have it all together, and you don't have to have the perfect prayer. Like Jesus said, this is your father that you're talking to. He already knows what you need. He just wants to hear from you. And there are times when we feel We have to convince God to love us. We feel we have to try and win him over. Or sometimes we think, maybe if I go to church enough or I do good deeds, then I'll get some credit with him. You see, you can't do anything else to make him love you anymore. You may have, you may, he may not agree with our behaviors, but I can tell you right now that he's well pleased with us. He has already approved you. He has already called you his masterpiece. Why don't you accept that right now? 
that your heavenly Father absolutely loves you, and it's He and and that He is for you based on who He is, not on your performance. And sometimes your thoughts may say this: God can't love you like He loves Jesus. Jesus didn't make any mistakes. You know what you done. You're not like Him. Well, I want to encourage you again: don't listen to those voices. We, if we can't make God love us anymore, then guess what? The good news is this, that there is nothing that we can do to make him love us any less. When your father looks at you, he sees Jesus. See, sometimes, oh sorry, he sees someone who is redeemed. He sees someone who is forgiven. Someone that is transformed by the power of the cross. He doesn't make mistakes, church. He doesn't see failures. Jesus said that just as the Father is pleased with me, so have I loved you. Are you living for God's approval or are you living for it? Sorry, I said that wrong. Are you living for God's approval or are you living from it? Are we striving to earn God's love or do we recognize that we have, we have been given more than we can ever deserve? See, God's love God loves us despite what he knows about us. God wants to bring the best out of us. He doesn't want to break us for our wrongs. He wants to show us what is right. Be reminded today of how merciful our God is, that he takes our side, that he bails us out. He doesn't give us what we deserve. You know, when our mistakes became too much to bear, he said, put that on me. Your sins are forgiven. I don't see your failures. I'll take the stuff that you're not proud of. And as for you, you guys can move on. You're free to go. You don't, keep, you don't have to keep bringing it up. I've forgotten about it. And sometimes we are living like we are trying to pay God back for what we have done wrong. We try to show him that we're really sorry by being defeated and discouraged about something that could have happened years ago. And we have asked for forgiveness a thousand times, but we just don't feel worthy enough. But that's not the Father's heart. He spoke up on our behalf. He took the penalty so we didn't have to. We don't have to live beaten down and discouraged after he has gone through great lengths to lift us up. The price has been paid, church. Isn't that some good news? Yeah, the price has been paid. The first time you ask for forgiveness, his mercy came rushing in. Now we have to receive it and move forward. The reason people get stuck in a place of guilt and condemnation is because they only see God as God and not our Father. They think if I stop this and change that and fix themselves before they can get right with God, but the Bible tells us to come boldly. Come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find help, even in our time of need. You see, we won't go boldly to the throne if we think that the one sitting on it is waiting to punish us for our sin. But if we know God as our Father, we can enter in with our heads held high. Isn't that a good thing to know this morning? Only he is rich in mercy and ready to help you. The Bible doesn't say come boldly to the throne if you haven't made any mistakes this week or come after you uh, figured out all your issues. No, God wants us to come boldly even if we've messed up. Even on our worst days, we can go to our Father. And sometimes instead of running to God, we run from him. And we think that he may be angry at us or disappointed. But at the heart of God is, is mercy. Mercy. You see, when we get ourselves into trouble and we approach God with a problem, our Father doesn't turn us away, but He invites us with open arms. And He would do anything He can to set us on a straight path again. Our God is a good God, amen? He's a good God. He doesn't leave us hanging, and He's always there to help. And when we are at our worst, He loved us. Think about that. When we, 
we're at our worst he loved us and that's the father's heart instead of running from him how about you run to him this morning as I finish the uh, worship team can come up uh, in the in uh, the book of Luke chapter 15 we read about uh, a parable that Jesus is telling about a prodigal son and uh, the son goes to his father and he wants part of his inheritance and the crazy thing about an inheritance is you usually receive it when the parents have passed away but the father has given the inheritance to the son and the Bible says that he he goes away and he splashes it with in wild living and after a while he he runs out of money and he finds himself um, broke and in his lowest point and he's and he's the Bible says that he's even eating what the pigs are eating and he says to himself I wonder if my father's servants would have food that is left over that I can have surely there's something there for me and so he decides to head back to the motherland where his father is from or where he's from as well and the cool thing about this is I love what he says and uh, the, the son says to the father he says this he says father I know I've dishonored you and I don't deserve to be your son but how many times have we disqualified ourselves as sons and daughters as if it was something that we earned in the first place how many times have we tried to convince God to take us back that's not how God sees us church a son is still a son no matter how he feels a daughter is still a daughter no matter where she finds herself because you know why it's in the blood it's in the blood no matter how reckless we've been we can't undo the power of the blood you see the prodigal son hadn't even made it home yet and the father could see him and the Bible says that he was a long way off and he and, and he doesn't wait till he gets to him but he runs to him he runs to him and the Bible says that he embraces him like a father and that's exactly what our Heavenly Father wants to do to you that's how he that's how much he loves us that he wants to embrace you that's good news this morning even when we are a long way off our father doesn't wait he, he, he embraces us he runs to us because he loves us that much our father comes running Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says this but God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners Christ died for us amen our father would run through any failure any mistake our God would run through any disappointment any hurts any pain and he would do it all to embrace us as his father as our father and as I bring it to a close uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 38 and 39 says this and I love this for I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither the present nor the future nor any power neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord isn't that amazing yeah that's such great news you know I want to I want to uh, spend this next five or ten minutes uh, in prayer and uh, I just want to invite you up if you want to come up for prayer you know, sometimes you know when we hear a sermon or what's been preached you know we can sort of relate to some some of the things that have been said you know maybe you've been through some stuff in the past week or the or you're still going through some stuff and you you just need the father's love to be poured into your life today why don't you come forward this morning for prayer maybe you're having uh, issues in a relationship or or marriage or even at work and it's just too hard to bear why don't you come forward this morning there are many things that we can go through in life that you know no 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 other no other person can see you know our father sees all things and he knows where we're at is that you this morning why don't you come forward for prayer this morning we really want to pray with you amen why don't we stand to our feet this morning and you are most welcome to come forward if you need prayer please don't hesitate 
I remember my mum would always say, he who hesitates is dead. <laughs> well, she, she was ruthless. But, um, <laughs> but please, please come forward. We would love to pray for you. We have people here that would stand with you. Uh, if you just need an embrace from the Lord this morning. Amen.